Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. In the early morning hours of Friday, July 28th, the repeal of Obamacare failed, despite Republicans controlling both houses. To make it clear, it would have been a partial repeal, not a complete one. The measure failed in the Senate chambers by a single vote, and John McCain is being blamed. Remember how hurriedly Obamacare was passed in 2010? It was pushed relentlessly. The legislation was a massive document with constantly changing wording, written, if you want to know the truth, by the insurance industry. Who had time to read all that? Obama's pressure tactics remind me of what hackers do when they want to trick you into downloading malware onto your computer. I got a call from one of these guys a couple years ago. He said, I'm calling from your computer company and we've detected a problem with your system. We can fix it if you'd let us have access. I asked him the brand name of my computer and guess what? He had no idea. In the same way, Obama and his cronies said health care is in a crisis and we have to do something now, even tonight. Trust us, don't worry about what's in the bill. It doesn't make sense to make a quick, high-pressure decision about your computer. And it doesn't make sense to pass legislation that way, either. Okay, it's time to identify that elephant in the living room. I mean the House and Senate chambers. Congress has no authority to make laws about health care or insurance. According to the Tenth Amendment, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively, or to the people. Those delegated powers may be found in Article I, Section 8 of the Constitution. They are the power to lay and collect taxes, to borrow money on the credit of the United States, to regulate commerce with foreign nations. And I'll have to stop here because there are 15 more. Health care and insurance are not included. If you don't believe me, check it out. That's Article I, Section 8. Now, I confess, I don't like the concept of socialized medicine. It's a failure in Canada and England. But if you have to have it, the only way to do it constitutionally in the United States is at the state level. The states, not Congress, can respond to any so-called health care emergency. One more point. Each member of Congress, whether in the House or Senate, has to swear or affirm an oath upon assuming office. I think it goes something like this. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That includes the enemy of unconstitutional national health care. Even if the partial repeal had passed, it would not have been enough. Let me ask you this. What can a person be charged with in court if he lies under oath? Perjury, of course. According to Section 18, Paragraph 1621 of the U.S. Code, this crime can result in a fine, up to five years imprisonment, or both. Lucky for congressmen and senators, this only applies to court cases. But I wonder if defying the Constitution meets the definition of treason. Whoa, I think that's all I'll have to say on that. Perhaps someday we'll have enough Supreme Court justices who care less about politics and more about what is truly legal. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. 